there we are. Good evening, everyone. How are you? I, uh, I think we're good. I think the sound works. There we are. How are you this evening? I, um, I'm just, you see what I'm doing? I'm just, I am heap of peeping. Do you remember that I was going to finish off that tote and I walked in here this evening and went, it's not done. So you can see the coffee and you can see all the stuff that I've got ready for this evening. And um, now you can see me. <laughs> I, uh, I saw, it's only been two days since the last time. So that is my excuse for not walking into the studio and noticing the uh, satchel hanging on, it was actually hanging on the door. So I spent all my time setting up the set and uh, missed the bag. So who, who doesn't have a night out tonight? Let's have a look, shall we? Sue's home, Yvonne's home. Hello, Rhonda Barry, how are you this evening? Fiona's here too. Now, the thing, you have got, I'll explain later, you sort of got one of the panels, the, the, the last panel, a little bit short on one side, so you're getting one and a half medallion panel, if that makes sense. And if Irma's watching this evening, hello Diane, good to see you. Uh, if, Irma, if Irma's watching this evening, poor Irma, I had to say to her, we, we thought we had one panel left and she was mortified and we tried to do something for her. Sorry Robert, you can't make sense, you can't mute. What? Turn it up? Okay, turn it up. We've been playing with the sound again tonight. So we, we tried to... Um, do, oh, no sound at all, Robbie. No, that sounds very quiet, can't hear you. Sound level too low. Is that better now? So we've been messing with it again. So we'll see how that goes. Rob's got his eye on the comments. I'm busy sewing. So I'll just chat until it's ready. But anyway, Irma, um, I have to say no. And you know what? Our stock was fine. I was about to abuse a supplier. And guess where it was? Guess where it was, the last panel. Hanging here from the set, hadn't taken it down. It's been ages, ages. Is that better? Thanks, Rhonda. Uh, oh, Kristen, you get a gold star. Bernadette Height. So, uh, Irma will be getting her panel as the last panel. I thought Fiona got it, and then Irma's got it, and now everyone's got what they want. Um, I got my panel because it's actually in the bag, so I'm okay. But uh, yes, anyway, I, are you all good? Awesome, hello Chris. Uh, Yvonne, that means you, oh, you're better now. Uh, Yvonne Collinson, I think you might need to turn, check your volume, my darling. Live feed is being interrupted by a storm. Where? Oh, in Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Karen, don't you, don't you get storms every five minutes at this time of year in KL? I'm sure you do. Right, so, um, Rob, the girls have got a lot of sound problems. Yeah. So what are we hooked up to at the moment? The camera. Is the camera gone flat? No. No. Is that any better? We just could be here all night messing with sound. We tested this for half an hour before we started, I should add. Yes, you've got a panel, Fiona. Absolutely. Right. That's out. That should be fine. I can't talk that loud all night, Rob. <laughs> if I whisper... That's better. That's better. But I'm worried it sounds icky for the girls because we haven't solved the problem. Just careful that button. That, you can't have that sitting over the end video button. Mm -hmm. Yes, Fiona, the blue panel sounds good for Donna in the UK, and that's a long way away. So, it's what is it? What is it today? Is it not? It's not. It's um, Donna. Remind me, what do we call today? It's Liberty Day. Is that right in the UK? I think that's right. Uh, Joan, I don't know why you're not getting notification. We need to set your, um, <laughs> Diane, 
who's, uh, everyone doesn't know, Diane's in charge of the party, Brust, Bust and Agambi. I think they're good now. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, you don't go with the set. You right now? In your puffer jacket? Okay, so, we're all good. Better, 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 better. Yvonne, no. Yvonne, I'm going to have to get you to go look for something else, all right, on your screen, because everyone else is okay. <sighs> the stress. It's not really stressful. It's just that I've got, actually, you know what? I've got a bit of... Don't stomp your feet. You scared me. Um, I've got a bit of cabin fever. What time's Dan Murphy shut? No, not really. I've got a bit of cabin fever and I've worked out why. During lockdown last year, we were all home all the time. Yes? Yes. And then when lockdown finished, did I go out? No, because by then I didn't really have a reason to go out because we've moved the business home. And I realised tonight I'm a little bit flighty because we're going out tomorrow. We're going for a drive in the countryside, as you should when there's no 5k lockdown. Uh, because we came home from the soiree and uh, Monday morning, as is tradition, after any major craft event, there is no food in the house. So the first thing that you do... <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Um... <laughs> Judy V. Uh, Marie says hi. She saw you, Rob. Um... <laughs> oh, I've lost it now. As you do after a major event, you go to Woolies on the Monday morning, like an AQC or a craft or craft alive or anything like that you go to Woolies because there's been nothing in the house because you have not left the house you've been or you've been too busy to shop for at least a fortnight or you've been away for it and I must say hello hello to all of my mates in Brisbane who are doing AQC including Margaret I hope you had a really really good day today so I went shopping and then I went out again Monday Again, to go to IGA and fill to our storage unit because you know he's moved to Brisbane, all that stuff. I have not left the house again since then, so I can't do that. I've got to go out at least three times a week or it's a big deal to drive out the driveway. Do you, I'm sure you can all relate to that. Um, uh, it could be, Christine, it could be an internet thing. If you've got problems again tonight, hello, Marie, thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and Jackie says, all's good in Wagga. So, I have to go out tomorrow as well, because I have to get used to going out again, because next week is massive. So, before we get into tonight, I've got, I'm sitting down now, I've just got my coffee and, you know, we're all here. I, I will do something in a minute, but next week's massive, and I want to tell you about it now, because all of it actually pretty much relates to you. Oh, except my hair, that's not related to you, but Tuesday... So I've got, I'll have, Sunday is finished chicken coop day. I'll wait till you see, I'm going to show you Tuesday. We're having a, um, a going to the country, I think it is, or it's a country style show on Tuesday. So M's in on Tuesday, so M will be here with me, it's really exciting. Uh, Steve's cut off on uni camp, so we have to fend for ourselves, only for about four days. And then uh, M's in on Tuesday morning, so I've got to get all... Chicken coop finished, important. Wait till you see what Michelle Fisher's hubby made me. I will show it to you on Tuesday. And then Monday, get ready for the show. And then show on Tuesday is 10 a.m. Oh, I know, we're doing a morning one. Because as soon as it's finished, I'm leaving Emma here with you. So if you've got any questions, you can hassle Em. I'm leaving Em here with you. And Margaret and I are going to the country. We're going to Nagambi for uh, a couple of days to suss out, well, not to suss out the town. We know it really well but to meet with the girls that run the Mechanics Institute Hall and get ready for the soiree and get a little bit of inspiration, a few other places we want to visit while we're there. So that is Wednesday and then uh, I will be back Saturday morning next weekend. So that's the plan at the moment. We'll do Tuesday and then we're going to do Saturday morning. I was going to do Friday night again, but I think I might actually be out. And in between all of that, there's time with mum on Thursday, and um, it's it's getting there. We're due for some more blonde underneath, and I, it, probably not, but I love going with mum, so we have a bit of time together. Ooh. And 
This guy's flying down from Sydney. He's a copier technician. He's from HQ Canon and we are looking at getting a printer in-house so we don't send our printing out anymore. And that's really important for you and me because it means if you ring and you need a pattern and you need it now, I can print it and post it the same day. So we're doing that. It's a very busy week, very busy week. Anyway, Barb's here, Gillian's here, Rob Lee's here. Oh, you agree? Hi everyone, cold and frosty tonight. Is it joy? It's not here. It's quite warm because we had uh, overcast weather today. Merle's here and this is so much better than football. Oh, hang on. I have to prove that first. I haven't done anything yet. Plain lazy. You're too lazy to go shopping, Fiona. You've probably been at, oh no, you've been going to work. I was going to say you haven't done much like me since the soiree. So, all right. Now, these <laughs> by now are supposed to be on. This, I can hear a cat. She's, she's never here. Never, never here. And then, oh, here she pops up the second that camera goes on. All right. So, and I'm glad you all like the set because it was my color therapy this afternoon. And I will, I'll go through everything on it in a minute. Oh my goodness. Glad the cleavage isn't too deep. Holy dooly. All right. So these little guys, I just wanted to show you from Wednesday. What do you think? About, I'll just put these on and then I'll turn it around for you. So this is what we were talking about with this little kit. Thank you very much to everyone that ordered one. And it's on its way. Uh, there's a couple that are still here, but they are still here because uh, you've got a designer tote. Designer tote patterns and kits coming your way. So your kit's going to have the flash... Uh, zip, remember? I'm getting one of these little guys with the little hangy one. Hello, Ginny Gin. Hello. No. Oh, just thump the legs. Okay, so this is what this is what I'm putting on the back of mine. Your kits have got five of these in. So if you if you want to, you can actually do a whole row across. Um, oh, Ginny, like I did with the Liberty one. So that's the other kit that we've got. Poor Stevie, he was like, no, don't do that again tonight. I haven't got many. But I said, well, we have to, because it's a continuation of Wednesday. So we have to show it again. All right. So you can do your row of eight front and back if you want. And I don't know if I mentioned it. So this is this is the Liberty kit. I don't know if I mentioned it, Jin, the other um, on Wednesday, that because in these kits, you effectively have equal quantities of both of these fabrics. So, in this kit, you're getting uh, 50 of the 50 of the drill and 30 of the Oriental, and that kind of evens it all out because um, the the drill, which I'll show you on the wall, is now available by the meter. Now I've cut my kits. Um, you get equal quantities of both. So if you wanted to, you could switch this around like the Liberty and have the plane here and do the full row and the band in this fabric um, and then switch it around and have the print up here. So you can, if I hold them up, how does that make sense? Yeah. So if I hold that like that for you, you can see that I've used the plane down the bottom on one and the print up the top and then vice versa. And you can mess around and change it if you want to. So if you want to have more of the teal showing, um, you can do that. But do you think Lisa should really make an effort tonight after the show and sew those on? Uh, I'm not going to do it while we're here. We'll, we'll, we shall, we shall do that, we'll do that later. Hi Lisa. You're a bit late Denise, but that's fine. We've already spoken. It's all good. Hi Bronwyn, hi Julie. Here at last, good evening to all from Cheryl. I love that. It's freezing in Lara. Does that mean it's coming my way pretty soon? So this is freezing Atlanta. Gillian's here from Perth. Oh, that's lovely. I love knowing where you're all from. Felicity, nice mild night in northeast Tassie. No heater, too light tonight. That flick is fantastic. <laughs> Deb. Okay. So so you think there's coffee in this? No, I'm only joking. Deb says, hi, ha, good to have something to watch. Doctor says, I can hold a cup of tea in my hand, but I decided a glass of champagne. 
is the same and I'm enjoying it. Oh, you're hilarious. I have to wash this cup. This is one that we got from, uh, can you see the dip from Nescafe, Nespresso, two citral spoon in. I was really annoyed. There was only one of these freebies. I quite like them. But every now and then I get it wrong and my mouth hits. Mm. It's a bit awkward if your mouth hits that rim dip. Okay, so I'll finish this one off. But again, these kits are up now. Because they are cut, um, I said to Steve, I'll measure how much is left on the bolt. Because I think it's a stunning colour. Isn't it just, it's beautiful. Just, it's just me. I love it. It's, if we're going to have the teal debate, it's not quite teal. It is still hanging on the blue side. So it, I shouldn't call it teal. It is more like a deep aquamarine. It's beautiful. And it, it, the quality, you know, Steve said to me, to, oh, oh, I knew that would happen. It is a self-destructive stand. I've lost the lot. I'll pick it up in a minute. I, um, Steve said to me today when he's putting it up on the website, you can't do anything about it, Doc. Thank you, but it's just, it's, it's carnage. No, you're not. You're going to join Ginny on the floor? He's joining Ginny on the floor. Um, Steve said, who makes this? And I, I told him who the distributor was that I got it from. And he said, yeah, yeah, but whose brand is it? And I said, no, it's actually theirs. And there's a fantastic company here in Melbourne. They're the same guys that do all our beautiful linens, which I know we're out of stock of most of them at the moment. And we are going for a little visit to see them. But oh, wait, I've got to pick a camera. If uh, I want to show you up close, it's just, it's just lovely. And you can see that it's got real body to it. So um, I think for bag making or for cushion making, it is, it's just lovely. Uh, I think it came in, I could be wrong, but I think it came in at 1950. So, because it is a little bit narrower. But you could embroider through it. Uh, because it's a weave, you could sashiko through it as well. Uh, you could, you know, do some big chunky quilt stitches and everything. So, I just, I'm a bit attached. Now, the other thing I've tagged for tonight also um, and you can just see it over here on the side of the stand. I don't want to pull down the stand. As I said, this stand is just... Do you ever watch that old comedy thing called, uh, sequence called The Plank? Yeah, this is The Plank. Again, again, I did it last week, but this is it again. So see the beautiful... Remember that gorgeous thing over there? The Seven Berry with the... That's that lovely canvas weight in the white and the black. Oh, you're a legend. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, the hands sure. just come up on the side of the screen. It's like a series from the Muppets. Thank you. Um, that, that, this thing here, that would be gorgeous with it. Um, I really want to show you what's holding the shelf up. It's not very professional, but I really want to. I will show you what's holding the shelf up. So um, that, with this, we need to come back here, don't we? Who, who was it that had their bag? Was it Melissa? Was it Fiona? Who had their bag? That's for love, right, getting on floppy. Yeah, that is, actually. And he made the coffee as well. Wilhelmina, good evening to you. Um, <laughs> someone had it at the soiree. They had actually finished their bag. Well, we did that whole workshop where we used one of the ombres and we cut the leaves and overlaid it over the, the white and black print. And then we ran out of the white and black print and did come back for six months. Now it's back. And I have to go back and do it again. Mine's sitting here somewhere but someone had actually finished their bag was it you fee i'm sure it was you maybe it wasn't oh gay's here from grossvale new south wales loving friday night show don't know how you do it but i love it's all done with tricks and mirrors so this shelf here oh come on i have to i have to so what you have to understand is that the shelf is at least at least half off the shelving and then in here if I hold the shelf, the first thing that I came across that was the right weight is a new jar of golden syrup. <laughs> and it's lovely, it's heavy, and it's the perfect shape to counterweight the shelf, as tested for safety by Steve before he went home. So that's what's holding that shelf. 
and under the other one is the big tub of all those spike things that we use. So I had fun. It was a lovely hour with a bit of music this afternoon to hold it. Oh, Melissa, yes, hi. Yeah, you finished the... Someone had it there. Maybe it was Karen DeWilt. I don't know. Someone had it. Anyway, we have to go back there. So this is now up under tonight's show. So you've got the teal and you can see it. it it's quite... It's a very, very versatile colour. You can go across and pop it with yellows and pinks and uh, you can also pop it through into ombres. Now, this ombre is up here tonight because I like it, but also because it's what's in the bag. So that's what I've used for the flowers and we're going to just, we're gonna have a quick play with ruching again tonight. You know I love ruching. You can watch it on my YouTube channel. I think it's show three where I started this bag 18 months ago and I finished it today, yay. So you can go back and watch that, but I will run through it and I'm, I've actually cut a half meter of ombre because I want to show you how to use your half meter of ombre to get everything you need out of it for this bag, including the lining. So I want to just run through that for you. Um, look at the tassels. You know, it just makes my heart sing when I can go to Judy Vermeulen. You, I, I know you'll understand what I mean. If you can pull out an ombre fabric and then you can walk to your stash, also known as haberdashery warehouse, walk to your stash and pull tassels that go with the ombre in three different colours. So if you um, search tassels on the website, you will find a deep pink, an orange, and a light pink. And I just, I just had to hang on. Love it. Oh, and the other thing hanging up there. Now, now, now. Oh, I might have to pull that one down. No, I don't. Also hanging up the top, can you see up there? It's sort of not all, it's not all in shot. But please have a look on the website under pre-cuts. There's a gorgeous, gorgeous, good morning Yolanda. There is a gorgeous uh, pre-cut pack of pinks, all Northcote. Um, no, I'm not pulling it down, sorry. I, I wish it was a little bit, I wish it was a little bit lower now. But oh, this, is, this is a really good example of them hold these for you so there's oh there we go see those if I just hold them back a little bit aren't they yummy so there's there's literally eight six eight eight different fat eights of different pinks and they they go from that real red pink real real red pink down into candy pink fuchsia pink that's, you can see a few more of them up there. So please do have a look. And the reason I just put them up there tonight to make them look pretty was because they also go with this new, new pre-cut pack that we've got in the Liberties. So in this pack you get eight gorgeous, I've got them here to show you too, eight gorgeous Liberties. And they're, you know, as you know, we put all of our blues and our soft pinks on special in our sale last weekend. Uh, Steve's in tomorrow and he's going to take take them but also some new ones that came in and do a little bit of a, a mismatch gorgeous collective packs in the pink sorry in the blues and then in the soft pinks with a piece of shadow play so they will be ready for our country show on uh, Tuesday um, you know because everyone everyone has a different perception of liberty and I love I love soft liberties I really do but if I'm going to mix them with what else I've got, with Sally Kelly's, with solids, all those sorts of things, then I always like to keep them fresh and, and up to date. So we've had the soft blues and pinks for a while. We'll take the rest of the stock and we'll pop it into beautiful little really good value pre-cut packs for you. And then we're going to move on and do these beautiful ones. So, oh, 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 that one, this one, there you go. So you can see, are they just... They really, really do pop. And you can see what I mean. They come down to this gorgeous red. So then if you pop that with... Yeah. So if you've got your little Liberty sort of English paper piecing or a strippy little purse like the ones I've got on the wall from, um, uh, from the designer tote, couldn't think of the name because I've only just made it up, then, then this would be a really nice pack for you. We covered a little while ago making little strippy purses and things, yes, and I'm still to come back to that um, 
dandelion purse by the way going on AQL was supposed to be today with all the sound stuff because um, that actually we filmed that to a private Facebook page and then we upload it so um, I will have that recorded for you on Sunday morning and pop it up so you've got something to watch on Sunday and my lemon and ginger biscuits will also go up so because um, Cass is back Anyway, so these would make beautiful little purses, English paper piecing, mix it up with these, you know, for backgrounds and contrast. Even if you're just, I shouldn't say, shouldn't say just, if you're doing hexagon flowers, it's like when you go to the checkout, isn't it? Where was I the other day? Um, must have been Monday. Why did I stop and buy? Oh, we, I took Philip to buy a Medina cover uh, for his birthday. And she said, that will be just anything that is over five dollars should not have the word just in front of it as far as I'm concerned that will just be 300 no no it's not just that would be I like to say that's a whopping three hundred dollars did you love that I can see that as a purse now just just add add, add hot pink zip and it's done okay so I'm not touching that one though oh actually I do have to touch it I've got to get it off Oh, because it's that green underneath. Uh-oh. Um, what else is on the table? Steve said as he went out the door, I'm not going to take him off because he might be watching. Please tell the ladies tonight he has packed all of Natasha's Australian Butterfly Needle Case Kits. It leaves us with three. So there are only three of these left from the soiree on the website. Three. That's it. Gone. Um, and no more. Finished. Moving on. Designing new ones. We'll be talking about In the Car with Margaret on the way to... You can tell. I can't wait. Can you? On the way to Ngambi. I need to go. I need to go. All right. Um, oh, Deb says, I can see a 70s shift dress in the ombre with the bag and tassel around the neckline. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. You just have another glass of bubbles. Deb, and then come back to us with another 70s idea. I think that's the plan, isn't it? <laughs> I think that would be great. All right, no, I'm only joking. Okay, um, same as the other day, except, can you pick the difference? We now have our magnetic snap-on. So our designer foot has got its... It does, I just can't do it front to back. There we go. So it's got its um, magnetic snap on and as I, wow that desk looks trashed already doesn't it? As I said I was planning on doing, I did, I used a bright green because I'm losing that bit of green in the pattern that's underneath so I used the bright green and on the bit underneath. Hey it was really easy to centre um, the bit here because it's on the middle pin tuck. That made it really easy to pop it on. So that went on this afternoon. Didn't take long at all. So you've got one of these if you're getting a kit. Now the kits, or oh, that was the other thing I had to tell you. When we calculated hmm, the value of a kit, I, it was well over what I thought it was going to be. So they are still, what we've still got with these panels are still 50 but um, one minute, I think it is, before our 10 a.m. show on Tuesday, if there's any stock left of these, and the same with the um, Australian Butterfly one that I'm doing next, they will go. They will jump to 65. That's how off I was with the pricing. Yeah, because there's more fabric in there than I thought. Um, you can also buy, of course, the separate pre-cut pack. So if you've already got something gorgeous and funky in a panel, or perhaps you grabbed one of these panels before I did the bag, that's also a possibility. We've also got on the website, and under tonight's banner, this little um, friend of designer pack. pack. So you can just buy this pack on its own. I think these are $19.50 and then Steve says they have to go up to $21.50. But that's got the 717 4 inch or 10 centimeter strips that I have used for all of these. So if you've got this panel before I did the bag, you can grab that. And then you're going to need, look, 
on the pattern I'm writing one I've written one and a one and a quarter meters of black because I used heaps of black I used it um, under the flap it's in all the pin tucks it's in here it's the straps it's oh I went to pull the pocket apart on the back and I can't it's in here so it's sort of it's on the back of these pockets it's on there so I sort of went through a fair bit of it um, I also allowed you know like there's 10 inches allowed for the straps because I've given you enough to do four thicknesses and um, that means that you need 10 inches just to do this so I did all my cutting today I can all my cutting today to make the butterfly one and it came to one and a quarter so um, what I what I would suggest is that you grab a meter because I would like to think you, you can you can, go, you can buy a meter and a half of course you can buy a meter and a half because black black's never gonna go astray is it absolutely not but if you feel that you've got something else in your stash that you can use maybe for the back of the flap or just even for the lining in here Ginny just for the lining in here you just grab a meter so just it's up to you so if you've already got this or something you can grab one of these packs and grab a meter or a meter and a half of um, black and then again for your lining I've said I've said 60 centimeters but frugally and maybe using a bit of your panel left over for your base which is what I actually have done in mine then you can get away with half a meter so I just I just with this bag particular I just want to give you all of the elements so that you can mix and match and put things together as you wish that's really what I want you to be able to do so I'll leave that with you to ponder um, I'm going to put him back up because then I also did get made two little purses that are made with the leftover uh, strippy panel that you make for the pockets and the side panels on your bag so these, these are I think these have come up quite cute um, <laughs> there was a <clears throat> one should never here's a rule one should never try to one should never attempt or or succeed in making yes you did Fiona order the kit yes uh, you should never attempt to make and succeed in making probably I don't know we'll find out tomorrow night um, pork masala pork curry at the same time you're making two zip purses because it's really not compatible even though I felt at the time that it was to fry that off while cutting that while doing that while doing that while sticking no 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 so this one was fine and I went oh he's so cute and I I'm going to show you a quick little hack tonight because I haven't made these up the same way I've shown you in the pattern ha huh? um, the way that I put it in the pattern, so it's all very neat and tidy, is the way that we do the top of the zips with our makeup purse, uh, makeup purse patterns, where you add your little tab uh, onto each end of your zip. But today, because I was doing in between dinner for tomorrow night and a few other things, and um, in the kit you actually get half a metre of beautiful black gold and two zip pulls to make these, I went, no, we're not going to bother with that, we're just going to go straight zip. And so I just went straight zip. So we're going to straight zip tonight because I know you can go back and watch the makeup purse on YouTube. So that is just straight in, no messing around, no tabs, no nothing. Um, one thing you should do though, if I forget to do it when I'm showing you, is just reinforce on each end if you haven't got a tab. But I'm look, I'll tell you what, for what it's going to get used for. What did I use? Oh, see, I used leftover medallion in there you really can't see it you could use anything you could use a bit of your extra black and then hello Elizabeth Kringle how are you um <laughs> gay no the put no the purse the purse suffered if you're wondering which one the purse suffered because you're ready hello Kieran how are you uh, panels and paisley oh thank you um, thanks dude hey do you want to know what suffered were you ready that's what happened. I got a little bit uncoordinated 
with <laughs> pairing up my panels on which side I was pairing them up. Um, so I ended up with the lining on the outside on one side. However, as I sat there and went, rr, 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 shall I unpull it? I went, I could actually, you know, I could convince the girls tonight that I did it on purpose. Um, so let's just go with that, shall we? <laughs> so inside, I have uh, the half a medallion and half stripe. And uh, on the outside, I have half stripe and half medallion. So in the pit, in the promotional pictures on the front of the um, on the front of the pattern, and uh, on the website. And Insta was it Instagram today? Instagram, Facebook today. You can't see the back, so I got away with it. But there you go. So when you get, as we talked about the other day, when you when you get your pattern, and I have here's the draft. Cass is doing the final the the, the final round tonight. Um, I'll show you. There's a funky page. That's got funky diagrams. Here it is. Hold that down there and then I can hold it up. Here's revealing everything on Facebook. No, we're not really. You couldn't do it with just this picture. Hang on. Before I do that. Okay. It looks like a big fat barcode on the bottom of a pack of cereal at Aldi, doesn't it? Look at that. No. <laughs> Straight through. Okay. So when you have pieced your great long strippy bit like we talked about the other day with your 14 strips, and your pin tucks, what I couldn't really explain to you well the other day is this is what you do with it. So you see what happens? You chop down your front and back panels, you chop one lot and do your side uh, panel pieces at the bottom of each side panel, and then you cut two pieces for your large purse and two pieces for your small purse, and that all comes off this. Oh, and that's a funky thing we did at the base. So that's what you're going to do. And what I love, what I think I really like about this pattern, now that I've done it, it's not about you, it's about me, really, is that now I can use this as a blank canvas to do so many different things. I can just, you know, my brain keeps for a while, just keeps coming back to this. We packed today um, my Japanese Baltimore, so I've got the two Baltimores, the Japanese one, one uh, to go off to Natasha. And my eye, just looked at all of the the circular mon designs with all of the circular florals and and things and on the original Baltimore which I've got the the first first one I ever made here and that's got the other one um, there's the circle of autumn leaves and I'll show you why in a minute and I just went oh I could just put that there so if we go through and run the oriental Baltimore you know which I want to do once a month on the show and just do all the demo of the bits and then you can just buy a kit for that block or whatever I'm just going pop it there it doesn't have to go in a quilt it doesn't have to go just just let's do one study here or something nice and I've got something I'll show you um what I was talking about with the base this is what I ended up doing because I wasn't wasn't quite sure what I wanted for the base so I took one of the medallions off off the panel and I uh, put it in the instructions as well you'll actually cut a square chop it in half and then mirror image them and sew them together and that's the base that I ended up with like that just for something different you can chop it from anywhere you can do it in plain black if you want to um, if you didn't want to make the purses you could do your base which would kind of be sacrilege wouldn't it but you could do it in your leftover strippy panel because your panel your your strippy piece that you make up is wide enough is the right width to do this so you could do that as well if you wanted to so there you go. It's up there. All right, so we'll go run through on purses tonight. And yep, yep, yep. Really, really pretty diagrams. Um, and it goes on and it goes on. And it's got really funky photos and diagrams and instructions for the purses with little tabs on each end if you want to. If not, I'll show you how to do it straight up tonight. I think straight up is pretty good if you haven't done it before. The main thing I'm going to say is though, Sharp needle, good traction with your foot. That's going to be paramount because we are going through or over a metal zip. So you're just going to have to slow down, go slow with a nice sharp needle 
and we'll, it'll all be it'll all be good. All right, so that's those. Now the other kit. I'm slowly destroying the stand. I'll put those over here. The other kit, which is up on the website now, and the sample is not made because, well, the sample's just not made. Uh, it's just haven't had the time. But also, I thought, well, I can run through it with you. That's never going to look the way Steve put it in a bag, is it? Um, I can run through it with you because that's really important so you can get a feel for all of the pieces. This is my black. And this one I'm doing in, as we talked about, in my uh, Under the Australian Sun butterfly print. So this is going to be a little bit different because we're not working with a true panel. Oh, oh, I just had a moment. Haven't I? You know my Oriental Baltimore? I have told you, haven't I? I've turned the whole thing into a 60 centimetre panel. Oh my goodness, how had I not thought of that? Whoa. How wide are they? Hang on, 60, 60, 60, 24. Okay, so they're only going to be, I can't even remember, I think they're about seven inch. No way. Oh, hello. Well, that bag will be used to promote. Holy moly. That is, that is, um, that was a moment. Sorry, you've just witnessed, witnessed me with a moment. A design moment. Fantastic. Okay, so with the butterfly print, it's different. It's not a panel, but it does have a great big 60 centimeter repeat. So we are, where are we? Oh yeah, here, here to here. So, um, and it's a staggered design. It's a 45, what they call a 45 degree drop on a half ball. I think that's what they call it. I don't know, I just, I kind of zone out a bit when we start talking about layout. But what I know is, is that it's a 60 centimetre repeat, but you get two of the same butterfly every 30 centimetres because that's why the butterfly needle case kits have 30 centimetres so that you always get the big Ulysses butterfly. So this guy here also appears here. So it's, you get two in each bit. So this is not a panel, but it's still the 60 centimetres. So I'm popping 60 centimetres of this in the kits, and then you can come through and fussy cut whichever section of the print you want to go on your flap. So it's gonna go, I'm thinking I'm gonna go green again. Um, I'm gonna have a big green cans bird wing here in the middle. Then for the lining on this one, I should show you, I should show you the kit because it is, you know, we, as you know, we, um, thank you, Marie. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't need to write that one down. I've got it. That will, that will keep me awake tonight. And, um, after the show, I'll be racing off to my Photoshop, uh, my, um, what am I trying to say? Not Photoshop. My InDesign files from my agent and opening them up and having a look. Steve and I, 7.30 this morning, we haven't had time to finish colouring the Under the Australian Sun Waratah bouquets. <laughs> no, they're probably not symmetrical enough. I'm going to think about that. Um, so we're doing that at 7.30 in the morning before we go out. There's nothing like 7.30 and coffee and fabric colouring. But it has, to, it has to be done or I'm in big trouble with Japan. This, this kit, I'm going to show you this kit. I can't, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost, I'm lost. Probably, we'll go over here. Alright, so... In your kit, you have got, not that, that's me. You've got your big one and a quarter metres of black. Then you've got your 60 centimetres of the black for the outside. And then you've got 60 centimetres of the ivory coloured one to put on the inside. So, it is going to be your choice. Now, I know, I know some of you that did the soiree and did the needle case you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I could actually do black flap in the black and I could embroidery purse to cut one of these big guys off and actually just put him smack in the middle of the flap and you could do that as well. Uh, I'm not going to, but you could. Absolutely you could. 
I can't refold this now like Stephen had it. Oh my goodness. I don't want him to know I've undone it. Okay. Let's just put that back neatly there. Then you've also got this gorgeous pack. So like the other one in the, like the other one that we did for the medallion, this one's got a gorgeous mottled, now Shades of the Season or Northcote Shimmer. We have switched around between these two, but they are literally, you know, colour-wise identical. One's just got a slightly different little um, mottled metallic dot pattern but it's not going to make any difference because you're on really thin ones. You've got orange, Melba stylized, Singapore batik, gold flowering gum, leaf batik. How beautiful is that? <coughs> this is this beautiful new marble. Remember this range we've got? Um, next on my list for Saturday morning next week is the 3D Flower Fun Table Runner in the reds, blacks, in the reds and the blacks and the greens. That's going to be the theme for that show. And look at the shimmer in there with it. And these are all designed to pick up all the colours and the butterflies. So that is your strippy. Look at that. That's your strippy panel down the bottom. Uh, I'm very excited about making this one as well, of course. So that is that. And again, you can pick these up separately if you wish. So if you've already got your butterfly fabrics, um, you might just want to grab your black and grab one of those. If you've got black, then you just need this. And of course the pattern. And the pattern will be with us momentarily. So um, I would say that it will go up tomorrow when we've also got it finished to go in the kits. So hang tight on that. We will have it up there. Oh, if Steve, I don't think Steve's got it up yet. So it will go up tomorrow, but we're just waiting till we've got the kits done. Um, digital download later, just because it's a brand new pattern. Just holding back just a minute. Oh, I forgot. You've also got your zip. So you've got half a metre of zip with two pulls, so you can make your purses and your magnetic um, buckle. For your, hence, it should be 65. Um, I am all over the shop. There you go. So this is the gorgeous kit as well. I think we've got, when Steve left, he said he can only do three more of the one that I've got hanging up. So that's the medallion in there. There's the gorgeous ombre that I've used for the lining. Just, just um, it's like a chocolate box. Look at that, put that in there with the bubble. Yum, yum. I would love to think I could get more of Paula's panels, but I did bring these ones in from overseas. Um, I don't source uh, this particular company locally. I bring it all in. There's so much stuff arriving next week. Uh, next week or the Monday after. Yes. Which is why we had that sale, because I know what's coming. But now I've actually got the paperwork that says it's coming. All right. Should we just have a look? I am trying to stay neat and it's just not, just not working for me. Right, that's all of my rubber foam batting cut. You will need rubber foam batting as well. Single sided adhesive, please. Uh, I think we're popping that in as a, in the description so you can grab that if you need it to. I want you to have the single sided adhesive because with all of this strip piecing it's really nice to um, stabilize it on the side panels on here this is going to hit the soft and stable and then you'll also need to pick up half a meter of 630 pallon or 640 we are out i was supposed to have um coffee with kate early this week and it got postponed and i was placing that order when i met up with her and so it didn't happen it'll be here monday tuesday so if you do want to put a note on your order, please add, I'll hold your order until it gets here and just send you through a little invoice for your half meter of 640 pallon when it gets here. That I could say wait, but I don't want you miss out on the kit if you want the kit or one of the packs. So do that for me and I can we can add it in. Um, soft and stable, oh, sorry, rubble foam batting single sided adhesive is the best. You're gonna stabilize the pockets with your pallon and then you're going to be able to stabilise the whole bag with this and it's 
really important, particularly also with these digital, uh, digitally printed uh, fabrics. They're 100% cotton, but they're just that little bit slipperier. So unless you're going to stitch it or quilt it a lot, this stuff's really good. So that's what's in this panel and it's holding it beautifully. I'm obviously very passionate about that, but, um, but it's true. It is holding it really nicely, so that's good. Okay, with, 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 um, with this panel, let's just move this ironing board. I just wanted to have a look at this with you. Uh, and then, you know what, I can run you through all the bits I've got cut, just to show you how many bits you've got. Uh, these are my lining pieces, so I'll just show you, you 60 centimetres in the kit, uh, that's my pallet with a needle sticking out of it, and my two bits for my side pocket, so I've got those all ready. So you can see I'm quite serious about making this on Sunday. Quite serious. Alright, so out of your 60 centimetres, these are going to be your two back and front panel lining pieces, and then I've got my base. Super easy dimensions because it's 14, 14 and a half by 14 and a half. It's square. So everything just kind of just kind of goes together really nicely. So they are going to be my side panels on the inside. And then these are going to be uh, my little side pockets inside of my side panels. If you wish to add some uh, larger pockets inside your bag then yes definitely grab a meter and a half of the black or whatever you're going to use for your background and I have actually put on the pattern somewhere in there I've made that kind of subtle hint to actually get yourself um, a fabric for your background that is very similar very similar to the background color of your panel so and this, this is a little bit of a difference, but I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it um, detracts from the effect. But because this is back black here on the panel, I've used black solid. So if you had cream on your panel, I'd do my best to find one that matches. Because when you open this up, you can see I've actually got the black here as sashing to fill out the panel. And then, then it kind of matches up nicely with the panel inside. So keep that in mind. Actually I've put, I've tagged on tonight's show and I have forgotten to bring them in with me. I tagged the Black Magic but I also put in um, J5 Shadow Play which is our mottled black, grey black um, fabric that we use a lot and it's really nice to use if you do have a background that is solid black uh, on your, well, what's the example? Oh Elliot's Garden. I had my black background gum leaves in it, which I do, and I just needed a contrast, so I used the black shadow play because it's marbly black grey for the sashing, and it just gave me that little bit of contrast. Same with Hoffman Batik in um, Black Colour Floor 4. It's black, but it's got that slight, slight movement in it. Um, sometimes it just comes down to economics. I mean, Black Magic 1650, and you're up for about 24 for a batik. Or a shadow play so there is a difference in price but sometimes it's nice to actually create that contrast between a solid background and a marbled one when you just want a little bit of a subtle difference between them okay so this is that's all of that together and I'm happy with that so yeah you could add another pocket inside on either side if you want to just remember if you are adding extra pockets it's a really good idea to add your extra pocket to the back panel inside and that way it's going to counteract and balance out the weight with any flap that you've got on the front. Um, just, you know, so it doesn't all kind of collapse in on you. So I can pop those out of the way. Then, you know, I've got all my cutting done here. I've got all of my uh, black pin tucks like we did the other day. So they're all ready to go. And uh, what else have I got here? I've got those ready to go. These are my little tabs for the end of the zips if I decide to be a good girl and do those next time round. These two pieces here, these actually go underneath the panels uh, when you cut them down because these panels here are obviously not going all the way down. You don't want to waste anything from your panel. So underneath here there's like a little, a little filler piece that goes right across. 
so that fills in all that extra space to get it to the full height of the bag and you do that on the front and on the back and these two will be the lining for my pockets and as I said if you've got something at home that you think will work then you could use anything um, there and keep keep yourself frugal with your black and this piece here actually goes in behind the flap so that's the back of my flap on there so there's lots lots in there but it's the main, the main chunk is um, this 40 centimetres, <laughs> yeah, that's, you sort of go, Lise, where is it all in the bag? I can't see it. You've got 40 centimetres here and you've got 20 centi 25, 25? 25 centimetres happening up there. There's 65 gone before we even get to cutting the panel, so that's where it all goes. All right, so let's, um, let's just have a look, a look, look here at this and... I reckon all of this now. What do you reckon? I reckon it can hit the floor. I really, I really do. Oh yes, I want to show you that too. Okay. So, and this is this is all about you deciding what the main focus of your bag's going to be. And this is for anything, not just for my butterflies, for anything. Any panel that you should wish to do. Uh, yeah, Julie, can you do me a huge favour? <laughs> no crying, no crying, no crying. Hey, do me a big favour. Just email me at info at Chandler's Cottage and just pop what you've just said with tears and all if you wish um, there for me because sometimes, and we don't know why, we can lose comments from Facebook afterwards and I don't want to lose your special request. If you are a first-time purchaser, heavens, we need to look after you. Stephen spoils our first time girls, big time, big time. I saw one leave today and oh my goodness, it was stickered and it was, ugh, it was full on. He was very proud of it, but special, special, special things when we get first orders from people that haven't ordered before. And then there's special, oh no, I have to redeem myself now, don't I? No, Fiona, I don't go, oh, it's Fiona again. We don't do that, but it's always lovely after 20 years, 20 years, I am straightening that up purely out of habit. I don't even need to, do I? 20 years this year. If I disappear for a week, you won't, you, you won't hate me will you, if I say I'm off designing a birthday quilt, the 20th birthday quilt for Chandler's Cottage. I might have to. If things don't settle down a bit. Okay, we need a ten and a half inch square. So you're going to have to help me decide where this is going to go. I think I want this guy in the middle. Now everyone else is going to be flying around him. Uh, that's fine. See, he comes up here, he comes up here. You'd think I'd remember, wouldn't you? But you don't always. Sometimes when you finish designing a fabric, you don't, doesn't always, start. I tell you what, he's rather gorgeous, isn't he? Look at the big blue one. I'm not taking credit for these, oh, in terms of what the shape and everything is, because they are real butterflies as they appear in nature. So, um... Do I want him, okay, so here's what you're going to do. You need to decide if you want him straight on or flying, flying as he would in nature. So I can go that way and he can be hanging, up, hanging off that way to the right. Or here comes someone that catches how big? Four inch, four inch long moon moths, this cat at the moment. Um, I can go that way or I can sort of, do it angled like we did the like we're doing the the sides on the medallion um, one and cut on point and we can cut on point without worrying about stretching because we're going to back it with adhesive stabilizer. Yes, thank you, Ginny. Do do we need to explain to people that haven't watched before that haven't seen you before what you look like? We might have to for Julie. Okay, so I can go about ten. Ten and a half this way. Now the great thing is, I can center it because I can put the five and a quarter inch mark 
right across the middle of his body. I left um, a few things from uh, Wednesday tagged for tonight, or it's under the banner, because I figured they were kind of going to be needed again. So I'm just using my chalk pencil and my creative grids ruler. Oh, news flash! Ah, oh, so excited today. I spoke to the gorgeous guy at the Australian distributor for creative grids. I know a lot of you use a big ruler for what I'm doing now. I know. Um, but I'm not. And um, he has just got a wad of a, a, a bundle, a, a ton, I don't know what we want to call it, of creative grids stock in, which is so exciting because it means that I can support my local distributor again which is so exciting and um, we've got more of these 12 and a half inch rulers coming this is where I'm going with this conversation sorry uh, I've got them coming in and they'll be in about Tuesday which is super Okay, so they'll be in, and then, guess what? He is also the distributor for Clover. Oh, thank goodness. And that must have come in the same container. So I've got, and Lisa should have just done this in the first place, um, I've got a mass of Clover needles coming in. If you look at the website at the moment, it is so embarrassing. We're out of nearly everything that you like. So I think they will be in about Tuesday. So there's tapestry needles, there's embroidery needles, um, lots more applique, piecing in uh, individual packs and assorted packs. By just going, yep, yep, I'll have that, yes, I'll have that, yes, I'll have that. Okay, this is all coming together and I should just be quiet or we might have another incident like the uh, zip purse and pork masala episode. Okay. There you go. So just, you know, take your time. I have ordered, sorry, that's why I came up in conversation. I ordered just a few, not a heap, because they are rather expensive. A, uh, a heap of those gorgeous, big, big, uh, 20 and a half inch creative grid rulers, the big square ones for doing something like I'm doing at the moment just makes life so easy. Okay. Can you see? I don't even know if you can see that, but I have my square. So I'm going to attack it with my rotary cutter. Um, ideally, if I had thought to bring it in with me, I, I might even use my little one. I've got my little rotary cutters. Um, Mike asked me today, do you need those? And I said, nope, we're good for now, but I'm sure we'll need them again. No, Robert, that is a big one. Um, yeah, the little, the little green one that I make the girls use for their curves. And we have more roundup tools, and we have the clipper corner ones. And I love it when Habby comes in when Steve's not here because then I get to upload it all. Now, what I'm about to do now is wrong. So wrong. So don't tell anyone, okay? I went sideways. And this blade has suffered the wrath of a lot of cutting today, I think. Oh, there we go. Done. Alright, so that's going to be my panel. And I've got lots of little bits and pieces here. Hey, Jen. Uh, if I'm that's absolutely fine. Now, I wanted to show off oh, only when I do it order it at 2 a.m. Julie hasn't seen you. Do you need to come back up? Or what's going on outside? She goes outside. And then she walks around, there's nothing, and then she comes in and pretends there's monsters outside. Has everyone seen that Alex Anderson's got a new kitten? You want to know Alex, don't you, in the States? She's got a new kitty. 
getting a lot of social media time as well. Okay, so this is what this is going to look like. Now remember we've got to curve off those corners and like we did the other day, you're going to do that with your dinner plate. So I bring that down. That's going to go there. And then this. Oh, oh, oh. That's, I don't know. I got a shock. I don't know why. That's going to be our strapeze underneath. And remember, this is going to get curved down. I think my dinner plate's still here. It is. So, um, Julie, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen this yet, this is what happens too, is you'll actually use a dinner plate from your cupboard to round off, to actually round off your, uh, the bottom of your flap. So, but this hasn't been done on Facebook on a demo before. Grab a plate and tuck the ends of your panel So this is going to come up like that. I'm just going to have little butterflies going around. Um, and, and what we can do later, if I decide I want another one up here, I'll just cut one out of a spare bit and I'll applique him on. Alright, I need to go and do that, don't I? I need to, oh, that is, that is, that is Sunday morning. It's a bit of a dilemma because it's not going to fit our stand on Tuesday morning at all um, but yeah now all right so if he's going here <laughs> that green thread on that magnetic snap still works if that's going there let's think about everything else so when you come through and cut your square that goes in here this is going to be fun because you can sort of plan it that you're going to have little butterflies popping up. Can you imagine just popping up? So you can sort of, you'll be able to plan how, what you want sitting in that piece that's going to be seen at the top and the same on the back. Maybe if we've got a green on the front. We are going to want a blue on the back. have a blue sitting up there and then we can have all that running underneath. Now remember you actually repeat twice so you're going to cut two strips from each each of these and you repeat the sequence twice so you've got 14 strips. So the blue will end up on one end if you do it in the order I've put them in the packs of course and then it will end up in the middle so all of the colours even out once you get it all together. Okay. Right, onward, onward with the designer tote. All right, and then we're going to just have a little bit of a play um, with the zips. Now, inside the bags, uh, I have actually put in that beautiful bluey, yellowy, lime green ombre in the kits. But there's lots of other different colours as well, again, if you decide what you want to do. And I, I hung this one tonight because I love it and I want to do a demo for you on the ruching. And I hung this one because of this. But if you have a look uh, under Gelato on the website, there's lots and lots of different ones um, that you can have a play with. Now, I want to take a, I want to jump, I want to jump back to um, the satchel that we were doing earlier with the ruching because I think we should, we should really. Okay, so I'm going to grab a bit of thread. Now I've got one here that is black. Um, that is from the uh, the swing satchel, and I'm not sure that I did actually mark those the other night. Sorry, the other morning, afternoon, whenever it was, probably Tuesday night for Wednesday show. I'm not sure I actually marked the individual. Um, straps because you actually can buy the actual straps on their own you don't have to buy them in the kit but this little flower here is ruched and that's a little extra set of instructions that Steve is putting in um, the patterns for you 
Okay, and I wanted to show you how this works if you've got it coming because if you haven't done this before, it's just good to understand what on earth the triangle of fabric in your your kit is for. So you need a you need a strip of fabric to do a ruche like this that's actually cut on the bias. So that's why we give you a, a triangle. So we take a fat quarter and we cut a triangle off it. And that means that this great big long side is actually already on the bias for you. So all you need to do is uh, come through Fold it over. I mean, you can do it in one great big long piece, but I think really you can you can fold over, and then you're going to need to cut a two inch strip for a classic ruche, a two inch. So just to show you, there is your two inch strip, and then we actually iron both the long sides in on the wrong side and so this is already folded over ready to go so that's how you're going to prepare and do the one that is in um, the, the little swing satchel kit for the ruche flower for the Japanese one but enter the tote these have been done with this ombre over here and as I said you know, I'll, I'll show you just how to get yourself started with doing um, your strips for the flowers and then you can have a little bit of a play. But all of the ombres are going, that we've got are going to work beautifully for doing this. And you can see I've ended up with all different coloured ones because I've ended up with pieces of strips from all different parts of the ombre. So that's what's in this, that's what's in this bag and Steve's actually and I did a little sheet today on the little ruche demo with the photo of this bag so it's actually now under the free download section on our website so you can just pop on anytime you want and pull that down and have a look um, at it and I'll show you. that's that box up but I've also got this one um, that I've cut a piece off to show you with this is gelato 903 now I'm not sure we got around to putting it under the banner but it is a brighter you can see it's a Whoa, she's a brighter version of the one hanging on the wall, but it's still spectacular. So I have cut half a metre off because if you were going to cut some, um, this would be, you know, this would be the piece. Sorry, if you were going to buy it, this is what you're going to get in the mail as a half metre piece. So it's about where, where do I start and how do I actually cut? So you want to cut this way and everyone gets confused. I get so confused. And, and particularly because it's still doubled over. Um, I, you can open it all the way up, but if I know that I'm going to cut the whole thing up, then I wouldn't bother. So I would just leave it doubled over and I'd get double the strips in each go. I want to leave enough to make the lining of my tote or maybe some purses or something else to go with my treasure tote. So I'm going to open it out. Oh, and not dip it in the coffee and take a sip as we go. Was well, so it Yvonne had to go? Oh, that is very sad. I'm sure she'll fill us in later. Okay. So I'm going to put it wrong side up. Now, a lot of people want to stand here and they want to go that way. And they want to go that way with a big long slippery roller. I have got four and a half by 18 creative grids ordered but they want to do this and that's fair enough if you don't know how to do it any other way so the first thing I want you to do is actually turn your fabric to a 45 degree angle so that one end is on point okay so you're not that's just taking the need for you to cut sideways out instead of you turning we're going to turn the fabric so it's going to go that way and then I want you to fold it up like that. Now the actual cross grain or the bias is straight across this way because you have turned your fabric on point. So now if I cut through this way, if I just open that up and show you, we're actually cutting on the diagonal, on the bias, 
but we can cut straight up and down because we've turned the fabric. Look at the colour. Heavens, it's like, it's hibiscus and fuchsias and, oh, amazing. Okay, now, when I cut now, whatever the length is from here to here, it's actually going to be double because we've got it doubled over. So for me to make the flowers like the one that I've got hanging up, I really need strips that are about somewhere between 16 and, and, and 20 inches long. I know four inches sounds like a lot, but we're ruching it up. So it's actually not. So if I, I don't want that one anymore. If I pop my ruler on and have a look, it comes up to just to about eight there, but that's going to be 16 because it's actually folded over. So I'm gonna shoot through there, straighten that up just on the edge of the mat. Now, please remember, I am a lefty, so a lot of you will actually be holding your ruler on this side and you'll be cutting that way and that's actually really good. I'm doing it the hard way, I've got it because of my orientation for you. So, one and a half, two. So if I take this piece and fold it out, he's going to come up to about 16. I've got to trim off the selvage on the end, but that's a good size for me to start with. And I'm going to keep going because I actually want a couple to play with. All right, and then this one's going to be longer because he's further up. So this one hits 20. So that's two good sizes for me to have a play with. And you can see when I open this up now that I've only started attacking <laughs> this end here. So I've got, you know, to do the flowers, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got about 14 flowers on this bag. So if, if I chew through all of this half meter, including doing little bits for the background to actually sit them on that I'll show you, I'm probably going to need all of this piece if I wanted to do the bag full on like I have with the one on the wall. But if I just wanted a couple of flowers and I wanted to use the rest on the inside, then you know, I've got all of this to play with and I haven't chopped into the middle bit. If you really wanted to do the whole bag the way, you know, in one, in all of the ombre, you probably want to grab a meter. Um, I've got something else on the lining of mine that I'm going to show you that I love and I actually had it stashed for a fair while because look at that colour. Heavens! Um, and it's only just been put up today because it was saved on the never never for this bag. So half a metre, heaps and heaps of buys to make lots of flowers or a few and then use the rest for lining or other things. But you'll want half a metre to really get yourself a good go with getting nice long bias strips to work with. So we're going to work with these. I'll show you what's on the lining if I can take it down without. Oh, I've got it pinned. <laughs> and it pins or did it twist and then we'll take this off and it's actually hung with a piece of blue sashiko thread so that you couldn't see it and it's probably got a grotty tail in it oh it has but I can still I can still show you the lining I think oh without well, let me take the tail out come on I just, so, I just did that so it padded it out a little bit. Okay, so you can see the lining. There's this gorgeous pinky orange thing that I thought complemented it really well. I've got it down here on the bolt as well. Um, I might leave that down for a minute. It is this beautiful quilt gate. So I stashed it. There you go. Oh, it matches the top. See how it goes orange and pink blotches and it's got a little fine gold speckle through it so it goes beautifully but it looks also you go with this one too so you'd grab half a meter half a meter of this some black let's look at oh look we should look at the dimension shouldn't we we should we should oh no pop shelf So these are our treasure tote frames, but on, did you, um, if you haven't seen before, you actually get the pattern 
for the actual bag, the plain bag, with, but with the, with the handle so you can do anything that's got the whole instructions in there. So, laughing. It says 40 centimetres of outer, inner and rubber foam batting, laughing. So you go half a metre of black, half a metre of that gorgeous quilt gate speckle or half a metre of the ombre for the lining and then half a metre for the ruching. Right, so that's, so we've got the antique gold. Silver. Silver would probably, this is why I hung this, because I thought you could go this way and you could do purple flowers if you like purple flowers and you didn't want pink flowers. The silver, the silver looks really nice with the purple. Very nice with the purple. Can you see that okay? Oh, yeah. oh. Very nice. Now, so we've got those, but we've also got gun metal grey. You know what I'm going to think this goes with, don't you? Oh, that, that, um, and that, or that, this, and, um, my Melba fans in the black split the panels halfway and have half teal and then have the fans at the top. That looks really nice with that. Um, and it would it would work with that. Yeah, okay. That all goes. Alright, so easy. So you've got the pat the whole pattern in there for the bag and then you've got a little instruction sheet on how to do the ruche flowers. Um, and I've just used bias strips for my um, flower stems about two inches apart which I've popped on there for you. So okay, let's let's make one. Let's make one. We need we need an ironing board. And we need an iron. Hello Robin, good evening. Thank you for saying hello. How are you? Good. Okay. So we'll just give this a quick iron. So this is exactly the same as what you will do if you've got your swing satchel in the Japanese. Uh, all of those gorgeous tassels will go with this one as well. I do like this. I this must have snuck in when we did a big, big restock recently because. We were running really, really low on ombres, and I just said to uh, Tim, our uh, distributor that we buy these from, we get these here, which is lovely. Um, I said, just th these are uh, these are the ones I have. Send me one of each we don't have. And uh, with that, I walked into a huff puff. Steve, going really, really, mum, and um, we had to install. A <laughs> Another shelf in our already bulging uh, cutting room. So, and now uh, there's another reshuffle happening. Robbie, yeah. did you know about the, the other reshuffle happening next week? No. Because of where the printer's got to go? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so we're bringing in another long span. No. And the cupboards are going, yeah, I know. Too much fabric. All right, I'm going to use a pen so that you can see what I'm doing. So we've got both of those ironed over and you can see, see what I mean here that we've sort of got the same bit but depending on which way we wind our ruching, we're going to get a different effect. So if I ruch with the dark in the middle, it's going to get this effect. And if I ruch with the light in the middle, I'm going to get one that looks like this. So they're going to change depending on which way we twirl them. Now, once you've got it folded over, and this is on that little download for you on the website, you're going to mark them at one inch. So the rule of thumb, hey Robbie, this table's very wobbly. We're going to need a table review in the morning or before the next show. It is absolutely something. Something's not right. Um, we're going to mark these. At one inch, not now, no, 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 but uh, 
the rule of thumb is we've got a two inch and we've folded it over into one and if it's at one then we're actually going to mark it at one we're going to do that all the way down so I'll just get a little bit to get you started and then on the other side do the same thing but this time in between the other marks so when you download that little bit uh, that little little bit that little ditty in the free downloads there's a diagram I got Steve to pop on the diagram not to scale because it's amazing the amount of girls that look at the diagram and go oh and they just line their actual strip up against the diagram whereas it is just for a, it's not to scale it's for purely for demonstration purposes right I'm going to use black because uh, then you can see it I'm hoping against this but you know some things I just have around and then I go oh but what if it, what if the girls want it so there is this amazing variegated uh, from King Tut that is number 922 and we don't have it in stock this is from my stash uh, from when we used to be a distributor for for superior threads and I've had it forever because it goes with that ombre so first thing tomorrow I'm gonna ring and go can I please have because our distributors not far away so I'm going to uh, pick some of that up so we've at least got this thread that matches because I think if you if you wanted to quilt um, to match the ombre you should have a thread that is a drop-dead gorgeous match for it right if I just I want to show you this too see these stems so we, on here these are quarter inch bias so I know that you'll be able to get on the website on my YouTube channel or anywhere and find a really good demo on making quarter inch bias and I have actually uh, there's a close-up you'll be able to see a close-up on that little download I've stitched mine on with I don't I want to call it a zip stitch because it looks like a zip but it's almost like a double-sided uh, blanket stitch and I found it in the quilting section stitches on my Benina because it's I think it's sort of class like a darning uh, tacking stitch as well see that so I've actually used it I was very lazy I've actually used it to applique down my bias strips and then I've just added it in now I'm not sure they're that great um, it's a bit harsh you know given time again I'd probably quilt curly whirly leaves I'm not sure or I'd applique some on but it you know it kind of has created quite a funky effect so I've done the same both sides and you know I just went through about two inches two and a half inches all different heights have a little bit of a play you'll be able to um, refer to the photo of mine of course easily if you want to sort of get the same effect or you could have them all going down uh, you could have them in an arch you could do the whole panels in lattice work with bias and pop the flowers over where the where the, the lattice intersects if you wanted to all right let's go to we, we, we need a close-up <laughs> i've just seen where the coffee is it was right smack in front of your in front of your view all right pop over here Bird away. Uh, week F1 practice one. See you next week. Sure thing, flick. Formula one practice. Room, room. I love a good racing car. Don't get me wrong. But I like to be there. It doesn't. I don't know about you. You the same. I. I need. I'm, I'm a spectator of sports. Fine, but I actually need to be there, not watch it on television. All right. Um, so I've got my marks down on here. I'm hoping you can see that. Okay. There we go. Can the girls see that? Okay, Rob. A bit close. A bit further away. So what we want to do is do a running stitch. I was more worried about the lighting, not the focus. Maybe just tilt that one down for me. Um, I want a running stitch from one side to the other. Robbie, Robbie, 
Don't mess with the camera when the girls are watching. You said tilt it down. No, the light, not the camera. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Super duper. All right. So I want you to do a running stitch across. Don't make it too small. You really need to see how you can see my needle. It's not chunky. Oh, sorry, it's, it's not fine. It is chunky. And then you'll go across to the other side. Stop short of the fold. Don't actually go all the way to the fold. Just stop short and then pull it through. That little diagram on the download has, is going to do a much better job. <laughs> a much better job than what I'm doing now and explaining it to you. Okay, stop short of the fold. And then when you go across, give it a good tug because you want it to pull up each time. You don't want to get all the way to the end of your ruche and uh, then start pulling up because you want an even pull all the way along. Do you know the first time I taught ruching, here's a flashback for you, was at the Australasian Quilt Convention. And we were ruching waratahs and I love a good ruched waratah head. I love ruched flowers, I love ruched feathers. And it's a really relaxing thing to do, you know, in front of the television. It's a little, I don't know, the closest thing I can think it is, is to crochet. And I don't crochet anymore because I've forgotten how to, um, and I'm left-handed, and I've got other things to do. Probably should go back and do it, or something similar. I love a good knit, but I'm awkward. There you go, so you can see it's starting to pull up. So you're just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. When you've actually got your whole piece ruched, uh, and it's in the notes as well, grab these little bits that you've got left over, these triangles, and you'll be able to cut these down sort of into squares and use these to actually tack your ruche onto before you pop it, pop it onto the bag. So you'll be able to spiral it up and play with it on this little piece of fabric and then tack fold under and tack the leftovers of that square underneath and then you'll be able to literally um, sew your whole flower en masse onto your bag. I just want to keep going now, it's a bit addictive. Okay, so if you come back and look at this one um, that I did for this bag, I purposely, I promise purposely, only tacked it on so I can show you. So that is with it all finished on the back and tacked under. We'll bring you over to the other camera because it'll be better. There you go. So there is my flower and all of the leftover bits of that scrap bit of fabric are tacked onto the back. I'll finish off this one and I'll bring it back and show you um, on Tuesday with, uh, with this one. And what I will do, I'll actually sew it onto a darker piece so you can actually see that a bit better. But as I said, when you when you download that little demo strip um, sheet, you'll go, um, that's what she was trying to show us. That's how it all works. Okay, so, how's that look on the... <laughs> you know what I'm doing, don't you? Hang on, where is it, where is it? What's this? This is one of the... Um, Tadashi, Tadashi fabrics. This one is this gorgeous thing. That's what the flat. That's what the ruched flowers are made out of. On the that I just showed you. You sometimes it's really hard to pick once it's ruched up. But if we had that with the teal, uh huh, and we had that for our ruched flowers. Very classy, and you know, you know what we do. You would, you, 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 you would grab. You can see it in here. You'd grab some precious metal gold for your stems, maybe. Oh no, then I want the gold handle. If I did the gold handle, that would be good. Actually, you know what it is. You would. You'd grab a bit of, oh, you'd grab J5, Maywood J5 Shadow Play that I tagged for the, for the stems. 
because if you look at that up close see how it's actually a gray black underneath so I'd keep it really contemporary and go with a, a gray stem with those with the handle on the teal I can't get away from them I'm calling it teal sorry with the blue 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 I need to stop taking them out of the packets don't I right okay so I'll keep going with this beautiful thing so it's going to be super bright I actually do think um, this color as well this brighter one really lends itself towards going to a blue background as well so if you have a look at all of that with that I mean not necessarily this blue but um, our color works solid the color is actually called Liberty so if you go um, color works or solid Liberty it will bring it up it's a beautiful blue that we use a lot with our Liberty with our Liberty fabrics actually but that to me lends itself to go if you're not a black girl I think that would work really well on a blue as well okay put that over there Um, the other, I'm going to pop this one, do you mind, I'm not going to bother popping it, um, I'm just going to hang it up there for now. I don't think you can quite see it anymore, but you will forgive me, I'm sure. Stay, stay. Um, we'll do these zip purses next. I've got a really nice little bit of fabric. I just wanted to mention these as well, with a magnetic snap that you're getting in this kit, we do have them separately as well. So just in case you hadn't seen them before, they come in a pair, in a bag, in a bag, with a pattern. So you get a pair of them together. So you can use them individually or you can use them on a bag together. But what you actually get with them is a pattern to make the bag as part of the deal. So moves are on here now I couldn't find my version and it would just be because <coughs> it's in a pile it's in a corner inside a bag inside a bag one of those situations back from um, the soiree with I've got red Melba fans up here and I've got uh, what have I got down here oh plain black down here so this is but this version here is the one that we've done with the brown ones. So that's made up with Under the Australian Sun and the Gum Leaves um, with a really nice dark brown shadow play underneath. Oh, I've just realised also, here's a combo for you. This with black Melba fans in this bag with these would be a really nice classy bag. Similarly, black <laughs> black here with your ruched flowers and then use the rest of the ombre down here or perhaps a different fabric underneath where you could put the yeah, you know what I'm trying to say this would make a really nice platform to put ruched flowers on as well maybe maybe in the combination that we've actually used for the swing satchel is a good example I don't think I've got that fabric in here but um, you could have the main part of your buckle bag buckle satchel so this bit down here could actually be do the same setup as this bag but it's a bigger bag so you could have the the print down here the plain flap up here um, and it could be black it could just be black or it could be this teal and then you could have ruched flowers across here as well so they're sort of like big and small versions of the same concept if you like this one's got um, just a big pocket at the back that you can divide up whereas this one's got the the zipper on the back uh, if you do, your zippers can be they can be too they can get too long sometimes can't they and then it's really hard to pull the zip open I find so I'll pop these back in these come in lots of these come in different colors there's tans there's chocolate brown and there's do we have red I can't remember now but there's quite a few colors out there I think we do <coughs> have red ones as well Right, zip purse. So I had this gorgeous fabric come in and um, I think I mentioned it to you the other day. It's all beautiful 
maple leaves, oak leaves, it's autumn colours and um, what happened? Jean, go around the other door. You can't come in this way. Um, then you, you know, we get the fabrics now because then in America they've got time to make projects with them before the fall. So we get them during our fall. And uh, I need to find the big fat bolt of it so I can show you. There it is. Actually, I've got Robert Kaufman, 6644, Telic Fusions, sitting with it. Because I'm using it with it as well. But these are beautiful. Um, and uh, if I if I uh, if I was a cheeky person, I would be suggesting. Oh, Jonathan's in the building. Hello, lovely. Um, I would I would be suggesting, would I not, Jonathan, that they have come out of the same the same factory, the same design studio, just different companies, because they are made for each other. Girls are funny. Jonathan, where, are, where have you been all my life? And we need to finish my podcast, buddy. <laughs> I haven't done anything else for you. I did a podcast for John, actually, a few weeks ago. And I still haven't actually come back to him and said I want to do it again. I was too... I, I, I was happy in my head, but I was too serious. Because I'd had a sinus infection and it affected all of my jaw and I couldn't smile I really couldn't smile as much as I want so it's more like a serious news reader so anyway I'm sure we'll um I'm sure we'll talk talk all right afterwards I went that oh, was terrible I walked out to Rob and said no no we're gonna do the whole thing again I'll tell him later anyway that's now up on the website beautiful yellowy olive greeny rusty things all going on all finely outlined in gold and um, I'm teaming it up tonight with our friend Robert Kaufman Fusions in Metallic, in Spice. That is Spice. Uh, it's always been a bit of a game for me to remember all my Robert Kaufman codes off by heart. 6644193163 if you must know. And no, I'm not going to start doing all of them. Um, Steve did uh, ask the other day if we should do a... A pre-cut pack of just these 6644s because we've got quite a few of them in stock now and I'm jury still out I haven't decided but we have got maybe two different colorways in them but we have got some gorgeous ones not as many of the Regent they've actually I have all the Regents you can get they actually don't do them as much anymore so it's a bit sad a bit sad good evening hey Robbie yeah. John's gorgeous better half is here Dye Linforth. Dye Linforth. Diane's here. John, my ex boss's Robert. Memory like a sieve. Okay, Diane Linforth is in the building. Right, now he's okay. Uh, Diane's in the building, and that's really important for you all to know because her gorgeous hubby used to be the best boss ever that I had at Craft Foods. And I should tell Diane, I had a marketing guy at, at Craft Foods who made my life pretty much, not a misery, a challenge, a challenge when I hop and skipped and jumped and left my gorgeous boss, John, actually, to go and work in marketing. And this guy sat in the office behind me and he used to drive me nuts. And, and um, I'm speaking at a school now, now John will try and work out who I'm talking about, but he used to drive me mad. And um, some of the other guys in the team used to have words for him. And I was one of two girls on a 16 team. Um, and I ran into him in Woolies. And I thought, I'm going to meet my nemesis. And I'm gonna... Do you know what? He didn't even remember me. I walked straight up to him and said hello by name the whole bit. And he just looked at me blankly. So there you go. There is, there is karma for me that I should just get over it. So I'll tell you later, Rob, the rest of the story. The only thing he was good for was he was in charge of importing Toblerone chocolate bars, so there was an endless supply of them over the back wall of my office.
office but but we had been talking about him dying literally the day before and there he was in Woolies still still sorting out shelves and where stuff should go I want to make a zip post with you before you all fall asleep with my jibber and I want to use uh, <clears throat> one of our lovely zips so these are our continuous zips this is a half meter piece um, as you're going to get in your kit with your designer block pack but if you also buy it from us you get a whole you get a meter you get twice that long and then you can go and mix and match it up with different zip pulls so I've only tagged a couple of them I think but I've tagged the uh, tonight under the banner the straight ones I think the look you, there are themed ones there are there are hearts there are stars there are snowflakes but I think the straight ones are very classy they're quite they are really nice um, I had a chat with Vivian briefly last week who organizes all of our beautiful bag furniture for myself and for Natasha and we are going to get some different ones um, done we're actually going to get some Waratahs done to it to match Melbourne under the Australian Sun which will be really nice so I want to make a zip purse we're just doing this on the fly okay and this is the fun thing about this when you've got continuous zip you can do it because you just cut your zip length to what you need now you've got purses to work with particular sizes as you saw in the diagram for the designer tote but um, if you are just going to make some up on your own you don't need to follow that I think I can't even remember are there about they're 10 7 6 5 something like that so let's just pick something anything uh, I'm gonna go six and a half high Oh, so why am I wanting to go to five? Oh, because I saw someone today bought one of our last spring designer block packs. And I was like, oh, no, because we're nearly out of one of the colours. So we will uh, we will have to do some more. Hey, uh, you know how I said we weren't going to do the lilac under the Australian sun flowering gum anymore? Well, Jonathan, if you're still listening... I'm going into checkers and they want the whole shebang so we are going to have to print it again so we will have it back that's a bonus for us and that is really the one and only reason that we 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 push ourselves to distribute in the states because um, then Natasha and I get the volume that we need to put through the factory so that we can continue to print uh, repeats of fabrics so go play with the big guys Jonathan go teach you would be supposed to be teaching by now okay so we'll do this one the same right now with small bags it's very tempting to use up your left a bit leftover bits of batting and adhesive the rubber foam batting just be mindful on the size of your small purses because once they get down oh, once they get down to really small ones they aren't going to work well um, with the thicker perky rubber foam batting because you need a little bit of flexibility this little guy here these have got 640 pallet in them as I said if you need somebody doing an order please just put a note on the bottom and I will hold your order until it gets here and adjust it for you on um, just it for you on I think it will be here Tuesday sorry I'm just holding it under the light because that ring lights down. <laughs> there you go all right so once you get down to this side you know you really you haven't got much room and you don't want anything too perky in there also what you've got to think about is you're going to be sewing on a zip so depending on your finesse with your zips you need to be a little bit careful excuse me so I've got the last remaining piece of 640 pallet in the building under my desk. Um, best to put it on your outer, of course. And I'm just going to cut two bits. Oh my goodness, that's exactly the right size. How'd that happen? Just going to cut two bits of this so we can iron it on. Uh, Tuesday, I'm going to push myself to finish. Do you remember ages ago, probably when M was here last, we started our 
field of flowers, uh, little wall hangings, and I am nearly finished the top uh, of that little wall hanging in the country colours that we got from Margaret. So we're going to come back and look at that on Tuesday. Um, and a couple of other things that we've got going. I think Em's coming back with her stitchery version of it. And just depending on how I go time-wise, that denim one in the bright colours, I shall have to show you as well. We got, I think I mentioned it the other day, and it's now official, I've got the... The bill of loading, it is called, and the uh, shipping schedule for the next two shipments coming in here of my fabrics. And they include more Melba border stripe, plus the new black and pink one, and more Melba small floral, including the new grey one. And the second shipment's got more flowering gum because we're out of ivory, we're out of green, we're out of multi red with little leaves on it and we've got the new black one coming so now that we've got the shipping oh, I nearly put it on the wrong one now we've got the shipping we can actually move forward and pop them on the website because now I can be confident of when they're going to arrive because I want to be able to give you a pre-order special like we usually do so um, Steve's back Friday here. Yes, Steve's back Friday. Um, so I will get him to upload those. It's actually in tomorrow morning. Um, we're just not overlapping much, but I might be able to organise it tomorrow with him. We'll see how we go. But I will get up some pre-order specials for you. I don't like offering them too soon because a pre-order special requires you to pay up front and then wait. So it's not really, you know, it's got to be a good special, obviously, and it will include the freight for whatever you order. But I, um, I don't want to, you know, I like to know it's on the water before I actually make that offer, which it now is. So that's a bit exciting. I think the first lot's here. It said it lands about, it docks, sorry, not on an airplane. It docks about the 19th of June, and then it takes a couple more days to, um, to get unloaded in a container and then it's got to be cleared by customs and then we sit and we wait and we wait and then it will come on a come on a big truck now i've got dad in control of tracking the shipping because when you've got boats and stuff everywhere i don't get to do it we have had a boat have a, a little bingle before and then it had to be redirected it didn't sink um but we keep an eye on it just to see that it's arriving it doesn't come via sydney which is really really good doesn't go by a China port, which is good because they're, they're all in a bit of a mess at the moment. Okay, so we've got these. Okay, so I've got my front and back in this gorgeous new thing. And these are my lining bits. My gorgeous bits. Yeah. And now we need our zip. So, as I said, I've got my continuous long bit. When you get your half metre in your kit... This is where this comes in. So you'll be able to chop a bit for your big purse and then be able to chop a bit for your little purse and you'll have your two pulls. So I'm going to cut one of these down now. Just about here. If I, can, I can actually go a bit longer because I'm not worrying about the other bit tonight. And paper scissors. Okay. Now, in the instructions... For this it's going to come up as I said like the makeup purse if you just want to make one of the a cute little purse um, with some nice darts on the bottom you can down get a digital download of the purse pattern if you're in a quilt size you've already got it so with that you actually cut your zip to exactly the right width and then you encase the ends of the zip with a little tab and that just gives you sort of a really nice finish on the top with a little bit of plain black either side here that's really good as well if you're not using a nice big fancy zip like these. If it's a dress zip, that just gives you a much better finish. These are big gutsy zips and they will take going into um, these side panels really nicely. So that's what we're going to do now. So I need to sandwich my zip in between 
this piece and one of my lining pieces. So that's what's going to happen. Now, if you are using one of our zips when it's a continuous one, then you're going to need to put on your pull before we actually get started. So, just move these out of the way. What we do with these is you open up one end, not too far, and you give it a pull. Make sure that you've actually got it nice and straight first along there. So if it needs a little bit of a trim, give it a trim. But you just want to open it up a little bit. And then you sit one end of your zip in that way and then pick up the other side and feed it in the other side. Oh, I've had one come out. It's too late in the day at least. Okay, so you get both of those in. So they're sitting in the tabs on each end and then hold it and pull your zip on. Sometimes, I'm going to do it again for you. Just take that. So sit one in. But, but Lisa, 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 turn your zip around the right way, Ollie. Okay, one in that side. And then hold it and pop the other one in the other side. Like that. Sit it down and then just get rid of your finger. Just hold it either side with your fingers and ca carefully give it a pull. It's never going to work, is it, when I'm standing here doing it with you? There we go. So you're going to hold it like that and you're going to pull it on. All right. That is, I've actually managed to get it on so it's sitting really nice and flat. If it's not, pull it down to the middle, undo it from the other end up to the zip and then they'll even out on the other end okay so there we are we're on now you, you've got to admit that's a very classy looking zip I do like them and remember when you buy it by the meter you can go off you pick and you click and you click and collect pick pick and select different a set of pulls if you want to you don't have to have the straight and then it's red ones and then it's ombre ones there's all different ones so that's on we're going to bring it back down here. I'm going to sit it here now. I'm sure I brought, I did. In amongst all the menagerie of feet in my machine are our wonder clips. Um, I, I think I mentioned the other day, I actually put on, I've put on the instructions for the, for the zips and for the pin tucks on the on the designer tote. Wonder clips are fantastic because they're going to stop it sliding horizontally and vertically when you're doing your pin tucks and they're also great for this. So you want to put your zip right side down onto the outside of your bag. As I said we've got ample zip here so I can actually just leave a bit hanging off each end. I'm going to pin down just as far as uh, where I've got my zip pull really no point in going past this at the moment because it does distort the shape we're going to push it out of the way later and then onto the back of that we'll put our lining piece so that the zip sandwiched in between i love the fact i can actually string a sentence together about zips because you all know i had a zip phobia until earlier this year or was it late last year i had a zip phobia they are going in my stash i love them and they're very, oh, had a moment. They're very mum colours. Oh, bag. The maple leaf block from the Oriental Baltimore. Robbie, oh, he's gone. The maple leaf block from the Oriental Baltimore. Here. Gonna do my heading. So I either can applique it now, or I have to wait till my fabric comes. <laughs> I need a sewing machine. Okay. Oh, this is uh, Tuesday morning. This is, um, yeah, sitting here waiting for me to take all the photos. So I think I mentioned to you I was going to do a thread clean out after I found the donuts. So um, what I found when I found the donuts, as I probably indicated, was a very, very big um it has to be called a collection 
I suppose, a vast amount of beautiful threads that we just, when we had to get out of the warehouse, and I know I told you the drama that we planned to slowly get out of the warehouse, and then in one day, Rob's offsider at work got COVID, and we, we had to go into isolation. Hi! <laughs> Somewhere sitting out there is the big southern jewels quilt, and with it is my original oriental Baltimore quilt. So it's going to be a black background. Maybe straight ahead, Steve had it, because we were pulling out Natasha's Japanese one. Um, we had to get out in a hurry. All of these threads were new threads still sitting, or they were my demo threads. So they are literally, they've only had maybe 10 metres taken off them. So I used to use them when we did workshops with people to try it, or I used to use them when we were demonstrating Benina sewing machines, or when we were trying out different threads to use for uh, machine embroidery, or all, all those sorts of things. They've barely been touched. Some of them haven't even been unwrapped. When we, when we looked at what was going to be best for you for um, machine embroidery threads, we decided to go with um, Metla polishing because maybe on my antique sewing wicker basket up the hallway mm. under the Southern Jewels, um, because they're thinner, they're more economical and they fit they fit flatter so they're cheaper to post but these are all the beautiful magnifico superior threads that have hardly been touched so what i've done yeah can you just dump there ta thanks um yep so what i've yep. so what i've done i've gone through and packaged them up these are going to go up on the website uh, before tuesday and they're going to be $15 a pack, but, but you have to understand that they should be 15 each. It's just that I've actually opened them. See that? So they'll all go up individually. Um, they will go up under the banner just before the show on Tuesday. I've just got to go through a little bit like our remnants and do them. There are also going to be packs of kimono silks. Um, there's 12 weight sassy in here as well. There's a couple of bottom line packs, but it's a lot of work to do, but I want to get that done and offer them to you because, again, you know, if you if you know that you'd like to have more of a collection, but you don't want to spend too much, a bit like when we did the the polishing uh, polishing collections last year, they're a great thing to to break. So if you're not too precious about them already being open and having a few meters taken off them, they're a really good value. So uh, I will get those done. You know, I just need a couple of hours to. Um, take all the photos <coughs> because they are quite vastly different uh, in the collection so I want to be able to I wouldn't just do them as a random pack for you I really want to put them up and show exactly what's in the packs and they'll, they'll all be different there are there are still a few remnant packs I think I had a look on the shelf before there are still a few really good value packs there if you uh, want to go back and have a look, if you missed out last time or you missed the show, the sale show. Okay, I think that's it. That's great. And when we turn it on, it'll be all bright. I uh, thought tonight to bring the pedal up to surface so I didn't have to bend over very ungraciously to put to plug it in and find it but now I don't know what happens I think you just abseil it down there we go so, bright light on bright light on come on Bernie up you go there we are all good okay hey handsome he'll come back and he'll move that ring light again so you can see a bit better so, um, he moved the camera. All right, there we go. So we'll pop over to this one and let's get these, this zip sewn in. So, we talked a little the other day about your accurate piecing and everything for your quarter inch seams for your pin tucks. And now we're just going to pop on our zip foot and do the same. So I've got my 
dual feed tonight because I've got my 570. So this has got the little lever that comes round and clips on like that. Now, there's a bit of beeping going to happen because I've been sewing other things and I need to switch back over and I haven't turned the beep down on my machine for you. But the thing is I have to change on this gorgeous machine. I have to tell it I have got my zipper foot on otherwise it will not let me uh, sew. And that's a really good thing so it's super safe. So I've moved over my needle to the other side and then we can pop this underneath and we'll be good to go. Just two ticks girls. Rob, did you like that? I said it very seriously so that he comes running. Rob. Okay, so we're going to pop. Where were you when we needed you? You moved all of this and now it's not working for where I am. You moved it, you rezoned, and you refocused, and, and the ring light needs going back. Okay, so I've got my needle all the way over. I need to zoom that. Thank you. Beautiful. Tough. Uh, moved my needle all the way across. I'm going to put my foot down. There we go. If you start sewing, with a dual feed machine and it's slipping and sliding. You know what that means, don't you? You have not put your dual feed on. So just make sure to engage it because you'll really know about it. Okay, when I get down close to where that zip pull is, which is about, oh, it's way down there. We'll stop, we'll take our, pin, take our clip out, we'll raise our foot. Then I'm going to sneak under here and have a look and grab my pull. I'm going to push it down towards the back. So it's now down here, but just be careful, don't take it too far. Um, or it's going to shoot off the end and we'll have to put it back on again. Not that I did that today, did. I'm popping a clip back in because you think you can hold them all together, but the zips with the zipper foot can be slippery little suckers. So it is best to have it really well clipped. Okay. There you go. So that's that side on. What I would love you to do for me, because you'll have more time, is actually look at that. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? I sorry, I just I'm still, you know, I've still got this zip phobia going on. So that's one side. Now, that's not bad. I had, <laughs> I had to unpick it today because I didn't have enough clips in. So that's that side in. The best thing to do at this point is give it a really good press. And if this, if this purse is going to see a lot of action, give that a really good press through there for me. Top stitch. And in fact, I think that's in the instructions. You're going to top stitch it. All right. Now we're going to do the other side. So we'll flip it over and do the same thing. We shall pop on, just turn that back, pop on the other side of our purse. And this is where things went wrong with the curry. Because and this is where I started putting, I put the lining on. Now, now, now I'm really freaking myself out, I've got it wrong. That goes to there and that goes, yeah, that's right. Uh, put the lining on. I don't know how I did it. Okay, so that's on there. Then, push this all out of the way. We'll come back and put it, put the lining in. Um, I've always, I've tried to do the shortcut and just put them all together at the same time, but I never seem to get that zip well positioned if I try and just sandwich it in between. So that's now in. I'm going to go back over to the machine and uh, pop it in. And my threads come out. Oh, I 
I scored a gig. I'm going out again, but not until uh, uh, Naughty Quilters. I think, oh my goodness, now I can't even tell you the date. It's about the 18th or 19th, 20th, somewhere in there. Um, I'll be over at North of the Yarra Quilters for their Saturday meeting. So if you want to hop on there, I'll pop it up as an event on my Facebook page as well. But if you live over near the Yarra and you're a Naughty Quilter and you'd like to come along for the day, um, it would be lovely to see you. I believe, rumour has it, um, it's Soup and Roll Day. And I have been there for a Soup and Roll Day before. It's pretty good. So um, if you want to just have a look at your calendar, I'm sure it's around the 19th-ish. It's the weekend after the long weekend. And I think Rob just found that out because I think he's coming with me and he's just found out on Facebook. Sorry, Rob. Um, and then... 20th of August, I will be at the Quick Vic Quilters Winter Gathering, which is being hosted by the beautiful girls, who are also a long time favourite of mine, uh, at the Bacchus Marsh Quilters Guild. So I'll be down there with them for that weekend. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, I mean, the VQ Gathering is always a lot of fun. So I'll be down there for that too. So it's all oh, it's all getting very busy and very very normal almost you could say normal to be out and about. Um, you know, and you throw in throw in a couple of soirees, uh, hours in uh, early August, and then wow, that is going to go early August, isn't it? Before back as March, uh, and then. Um, one back in Garfield in September. I am trimming off the zip at that end. Hey, look at that. See what I mean about top stitching? It is really important because otherwise this lining is going to come up from underneath and it's going to bunch up underneath. So I really want you to do that for me. See what I mean? So come, please come through and do that. I am going to live with mine like this because I want to get it done for you. But look. Oh, still gets me. Okay. So I'm actually going to hold these together. Um, we need this open a fair way, but we need to be able to sew this together. If you are taking your time and being careful, a little tack stitch across here right now is a really good idea if you are doing this this shortcut hack like I am instead of putting those tabs on the end and that tab on the end one of its purposes is to secure and hold these two bits of zip together which we're not doing so now is the fun bit you actually bring your two outer panels up together and you put your two lining panels together and we are going to sew right around and leave a gap on the uh, lining down here to turn it through. Really important that you leave a fair bit of your zip open because when we turn it through, we're going to turn it through not just this opening here, but we've got to get this part of the bag, the outer bag, up through the zip opening as well. So um, what I would do also with your zip ends, with this little hack, you need to, all you need to do, can you see that? Fold down these seam allowances towards the lining so I want to be able to I want to sew with them there like that if you're unsure about doing this do one side at a time and then do each end rather than going right round if you if it's the first time you've done it and you want to be really careful I'm going to flip and I'm going to start on this side first now watch this I'm actually not going to use any pins I'm to that point in the day where I go no no if the girls weren't here I wouldn't so they might as well see all of my bad habits that happen at night time when I'm sewing. So here's my two lining bits. Oh, first of all, let's change feet. Now, <clears throat> you can run with a dual feed. You can run with your... Well, there's my walking foot. With a dual feed, you'll be able to run with a number 97 foot. Here, Miss Judy Vermeulen, you can run with that um, because there's no piecing, all right. So it's the machine is going to be 
okay with dual feed. Uh, you don't, sorry about the beeping girls. You, you don't need to run with your walking foot if you don't want to. You'd get away with it. It's not heavily pieced, there's nothing on the bias. So you'd be all right for a small project like this. Um, if you do not have dual feet, then whack on your walking foot. Again, this is a purse that I am literally making up as I go. So I don't necessarily have to have a super accurate quarter inch seam. All I want is a consistent seam. So I can line up any bit of my walking foot. I do have a really nice quarter inch mark on it, but I can line up any bit. And is there anything else I need to tell it? I don't think so. I think a normal stitch, everything's all right. So I'm just going to... Okay, stop at your quarter inch seam, turn your corner. I'm going to start lining up these two little seams for my zip now, so they're ready. Now we're getting closer and just sit them nice and neat snug together with both the seam allowances they're facing towards the foot on this side and as I approach the zip I will just slow down as I said I've got a nice sharp needle in depending on your machine depending on the age how strong your needle shaft is you might want to turn the hand wheel to get over the zip inch now on the way around of course in in this seam here you can be adding little keychain links to whack a tassel on um, name tags all of that all right then up the other side and this time I can actually pull down my uh, seam allowances. I'm going in the same direction as my needle. I'll just try and sit as best I can because I haven't tacked them, those zip ends together as I slowly go over. It's actually less, less frivolous than going over a pin. So now I can trim the rest of that end off there. Uh, cannot see, did have here earlier, not sure now. <laughs> my, um, my forceps, easiest way to turn it through. This is my big forceps, never mind. I actually think I tagged them for tonight's show to suggest to you that it's the best way to turn a bag through. Never mind. We'll go up in here flick out that corner. Look, the main thing about using the forceps is I could have got away with a much smaller uh, opening to sew up in my lining. For my um, Quilters Life girls, you know what would be really nice in this purse is a uh, a little satchel of our spiced potpourri that we made before Christmas with the cypress and the juniper berries and things in it. Okay, but just before you tuck that lining back in, it's a really good chance now to give this opening in the lining a press. So you're going to press that and then uh, slip stitch it or top stitch it. Okay, it's orange. I've got black in the machine. I'm really liking this purse, so I'm going to wait and I'll slip stitch that later. So you've got two little points to get down in here. You've got to get down that bit in there and that bit down in the other corner and then I can push my lining down in. As I said, you know, if I had that top stitch around the top, come on up you come, it's going to sit a little flatter. There we are. So I can now zip that up. 
And as I said, I did forget going round, and I said it earlier for that reason, that a couple of little extra reinforcing stitches when you go over the ends of the zip is a good idea. But there you go. Super fast and easy. So my zip end, see how they come over a little bit on the edge? That's not going to happen if you do those little tabs on each end. You're going to end up with a flatter finish to your top and you're going to end up with a little bit of black, whatever your background is, on each end. But I'm really liking it looking just like that. My ends down this end would be a little bit more even if I had taken the time to stop and actually tack them. But again, it's for, for what it is. I'm happy with that. So I could now have one of these and then I could have a smaller one and then I could make my bag in this and um, I'm quite sure I would have plenty of fabric to make up a pack to go with that. Actually what would go with this really well if you love oranges we have those essential applique packs that have got 10 yeah, they've got the 10 four inch strips. So you could grab one of those in the oranges um, or the greens and you could put that with, I reckon at a stretch half a meter of this because it's not a panel and you're not fussy cutting. So you could actually put that in here and here and here. Do use your applique essential pack for here and, um, and just plain black because it's a black background so many different ways you could this bag's gonna haunt me now but look if it's as long as it's versatile you know you we I can do bags that really only work with one fabric or a couple of fabrics but then we can come up with bags I'd rather come up with bags that are a lot simpler that you can come through and use as a blank canvas what I got Rob to bring in was this I can't hold it all up for you but this is the original 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 <laughs> Um, Oriental Baltimore which Natasha's just been running in the UK and uh, Steve and I were talking about it today we might we might just throw it in every now and then as a block on our live shows uh, and this is the quilt that's been turned into a 60 centimetre panel so it's going to have all of these actually printed onto fabric and then you'd be able to put whichever one you wanted on there but in the meantime I'm liking the idea of having a block applique like this with this circular design in a size that will fit on here and then we'd be able to use the print for underneath. So lots of opportunities. Anyway, um, I think I have ear bashed you enough, don't you, for one Friday night. I don't think there was. Uh, the only other thing I did want to show you, just, just, uh, just for the sake of it. Ah, oh, just seeing the bags on the floor. Um, this did I show you this I think I did if you wanted something along the lines of this color with a bit of metallic that's normal cotton weight this came in and I've popped it under the banner I think I did show it to you it's the nature's harvest the same as the beautiful rusty orange one and the red we've got in these packs and we've got that beautiful limey green one now too so that is here as well if you want that really beautiful rich tealy blue color um, and I just saw on the down here I did pull these out to show you the treasure tote made up um, in in different fabrics so that is it made up in the black so this is what I mean I loved that color with the teal and then possibly popping it with the gunmetal gray or the gold um, handles that's the gunmetal grey, see there on the Melba. I didn't actually use the silver, I used the gunmetal. So it takes 40 centimetres, so you'd be bought, used by half a metre of Melba, or half a metre of that, and it will just make the bag up on the outside for you as it is. So you can have a play, so we don't, yeah, just, just you know, it's nice being having all the stuff so you can have a little bit of a, a little bit of a play. Um, right. Thank you for spending what is always precious time, which is a Friday evening with me. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you, um, I hope you all have a fantastic Elizabeth. 
that would all make it, you all have a fantastic weekend. So I just have to say thank you, Joan. I'm glad you like. I'm glad you like the fabrics. We love them too. Juniper berries. Would that make it a gin purse? Well, yes, Elizabeth, it would. My pot puree does have uh, optional juniper berries in it with cypress, orange, cloves, and cinnamon, and mixed spice. So absolutely, it's a gin purse. Alyssa, join us this evening. Hello. I forgot to leave the opening. No, I didn't, Bernadette. I got it. It's in... What? Like this open? No, it's fine. It's done. Uh, Melissa was... Melissa, we were talking about you earlier. About your finished... Oh, your beautiful gum leaf tote. I saw it this far away. Peter, how are you? How are things on the island? Are you good? Oh, I still need to come and visit. Now you've reminded me. Look out. I'm out and about now, so look out. I'd love to come and see you. Um, I, owe, I owe Peter a visit and a consult. <laughs> On his cue. Um, Jenny, hello. Denise, hello. Kerry was here. Annette was here. Uh, Anne was here as well. Good night, everyone. The week has caught up with me. Hope you all have a lovely weekend. Marie, thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um... And I'll see you 10 a.m. with Emma. Now, any questions, you know the drill. Info at Chambles Cottage, please. And I will get back to you, or Steve will. If you've got queries about anything with your order, the, <laughs> the best thing to do is to actually put it, if you can find it, in the comments on the order. Because what happens is, is that trying to match up emails with orders, hmm, sometimes it works, and other times I'll come around here and go, Steve, stop! Don't put so-and-so's order in the bag because they would also like. So it's really good if you can actually put it in your order and then we make sure it all happens together for you. Um, as I said, Steve will be in tomorrow. So if you've got any questions about your orders, you can ring us from 9 o'clock tomorrow, 7.30 till 9. Steve and I will be colouring um, under the Australian Sun fabric. And 10 a.m. with Emma, with a trip to the country show on uh, Tuesday morning. I will not have my chooks yet, but the sheds will be ready. So I'll fill you in with all of that then. And uh, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Uh, I think that's all. All right, I'm gonna head off. I'm gonna find out why my um, computer shut down so I can shut down Facebook. And um, <coughs> we'll all be fine. And thank you again very much for all of your support and to all my girls in Quilter's Life. You're wonderful. All right. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Bye.